Hey guys, it's Roger Death here. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be providing you a little tutorial on how you can do encoding like I do. I use the program Virtual Dub. Uh, this is just the ver I don't know if there's an re updated release, but I use 1.9.11. And of course, let's start out by Googling. I Googling it, just make sure we have the up-to-date, most up-to-date ver version, if I can speak. Virtual Dub. And... As we can see, it, it, it's both 32 and 64 bit, which is good. Okay, so the la latest stable version is 1.9.11. For downloads, we're going to go to the virtual dub here. Yes, that, that's right. Depending on which version of Windows you currently run, for example, you probably, if you have Windows XP, you're going to be running 32 bit. Let's face it, you're, you're running 32. But if you're using 64 bit, like, if you've got a computer within the last year and a half, if it's got Windows 7 to 64 bit, pretty much, um, if it's got Vista, if it was in the later life of Vista, it's likely got 64 bit as well. And so, in which case, we're going to, I have a 64 bit, so I will pretend to download the 64 bit version. Now, while this is not what, this is just, program itself. This is what you see here. That's it. Uh, I mean, first, before we can do anything else, we need to get a codec. And the one I use is H264. And this is not it. I actually don't know where you can uh, let's make sure that's the name of it first off. Let, let's make sure that's the correct name. X two sixty four. Okay, that makes things a lot simpler. X two sixty four. Codec. There. There we go. You can grab the codec here. I already have it installed. X two sixty four. That's. This is correct again. I. Yes. Uh, it's a 64-bit version of it. Uh, if you're running a 32, it'd be X, I assume, 32. I'm not 100% on that. So let's look at Wikipedia. See if that's true. If this is a 64-bit only version. It might. But, probably isn't. But the point is, X264 is the codec I use. Check Twitter. Okay, it's nothing important. Shrink that down. Now, how do you use this program? First off, let's configure the, com the codec that we just downloaded. So we'll go into, once you've got Virtual Dub up and running and the codec installed, you'll want to go into your video compression. Notice how it'll always start out at uncompressed, RGBY slash that. Uh, but that's not what we want. We want to use uh, the X264 codec. And we want to configure that. Here's how I have mine configured. For sure, you want to have the virtual dub pack. You have to have that since we're using virtual dub. And you've got a bunch of different codecs. I use H264, the this one. I'm not sure if it really is necessary. I just use the medium preset. And leave your optimizations. You want you want the optimizations. Out of these multiple choices you have, I just use a single pass quantizer based. Quantizer based. CQP, otherwise known as. Uh, right? It, it keeps the quality nice while not being absolutely huge in file size. I then select a 25 quantizer, which is a medium. It, it's, it's got a this is what really controls the quality of it right here. And for example, this right here, this is a medium, not the greatest, not the worst codec. Uh, not codec. It's a, it, it'll make the video so that it's nice, but not too nice. It's going to make it good, but not too good. So once you've got all that configured, and you can once you configure it, you just need to configure it the once. So you just conf it's conf all configured. It'll go into it every time you 
start up the program again, it's already saved. But you will need to reselect it every time you start it back up because it will go back to uncompressed. So we're going to go use this codec. And then to choose which file, um, you will go to your uh, go to file, open video file. This is just going to be the first video file though. So once you've got that, you can play it, check hey, it yes, out. What's going on? It's Roger Death here. I'm doing some more. Li and uh, this is just a recording I did to grab the grab something to show. Once you've got the initial one, if it's more than one, which it likely is, then you're going to want to go to Append AVI Segment. Select the next one in the series, and it just automatically appends it. Append AVI Segment. Append AVI Segment. And you'll do this for however many segments you have. Uh, for example, this one is a total of... We have a total of 13 minutes, 43 seconds on here. Or that many frames. Now, once you've got everything the way you need it, and you're ready to actually render the video, there's no actual render thing. Instead, you're just saving it. And we're going to save it as an AVI. We're going to call this LOL. And then, you can have it show you the input and the output, but typically you don't need to. And then look at how quickly this is going. It's going to take about three minutes to render out. Three and a half, but it... it It'll take a minute to really understand just how long it's going to take, but typically it doesn't take too long. It's going to take, my computer takes less time to render out than it takes for me to record it. Because look at that, it's recording it, it's rendering at 40 frames a second. That's, that's pretty dang good. Uh, still dropping because I am doing this other recording in the background. And it creates for you a projected video size. It'll, it'll change. See, we've seen it go up and down, up and down, up and down. It tells you the current frame you're on. But basically, this is what it shows you. And once you've chosen, once this completes, there you go. Uh, it might still be too big for you, in which case you can send it through again, but you probably won't get a bigger, fi smaller file. But that's how I do my videoing, video compression, and getting stuff. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This is Roger Death, signing off.